is designed to, and its tether is hand-grabbed by a crewman leaning out of an open flight deck hatch who ties down the rope for safety. A weighted container simulating a person is pulled straight up and dragged behind the aircraft, flying at 150 miles an hour. Held in by a hydraulic lock at the center of the V-shaped yoke, the rope trails behind the aircraft, where it is snagged and winched aboard. At one point, the rope becomes snagged around the tail, and the pilot shakes his controls until the rope slides free, leaving the crewman to winch in the weighted container. Next came a demonstration of a high-speed airdrop. Because the combat talon does not have to slow down to parachute equipment, an enemy watching on radar would see no change in airspeed and could not determine the position of the airdrop. With its sophisticated onboard navigation systems, hundreds of pounds of cargo can be delivered at night and in the worst weather to within a couple of hundred yards of the target. The 250 mile an hour drop speed gives enemy gunners only a fleeting target. As in Grenada, if a special operations unit gets pinned down or surrounded, this AC-130 has the sensors and guns to deliver massive firepower with surgical precision. Though the AC-130 dates back to Vietnam, it remains a very potent weapon for special operations. Armed with twin Vulcan 20mm guns capable of firing 3,000 rounds per minute each, it also carries a gyro-stabilized 40mm automatic cannon and a huge 105mm howitzer. The AC-130 enters its trademark 30-degree left bank. Flying at 5,000 feet, the pilot calmly lines up the target, a single 55-gallon drum positioned next to a truck. In the aircraft's midsection, operators use high-tech sensors to find targets night and day and in bad weather. Using a laser illuminator, low-light-level television zeroes in on the target. So does the infrared sensor, and a device called Black Crow seeks out the running engines of cars and trucks. On the first pass, Spectre lets loose with 20-millimeter high-explosive and armor-piercing rounds and 40-millimeter mishmetal fragmentation shells. Though the drum is set afire, he comes around again, and a direct hit sends it up in a fireball. Next, the 105-millimeter howitzer is put into action. The pilot calmly lines up the target in his gun sight and squeezes the firing button. He consistently puts the big white phosphor shells on target. Switching to high-explosive warheads, the crew feeds the howitzer as round after round hit the targets two miles away. Given the rising tempo of international terrorism and the necessity for the United States to counter it by operating on the very edges of belligerent conflict, it will in all probability be the men of the first special operations wing who will air deliver the counterpunch. From Herbert Field, Florida, this is Chuck DeCaro, CNN, on special assignment.